Hello everyone, welcome to OPC TV powered by Saunders Communication. Today we would be learning about Mansa Musa who is claimed to be the richest man who has ever lived from the ancient Mali kingdom. Musa's father was Fajaleye and his mother may have been named Kanku. Fajaleye was the brother of Abubak, a brother of Sunjata who was the first Mansa of Mali Empire. Musa's date of birth is unknown, but he appeared to be a young man as at the year 1324. The Tarish al Fatish claims that Musa accidentally killed Kanku at some point prior to his Hajj. According to the genealogy of the kings of Mali Empire based on the chronicles of Ay Khaldun, Musa was the 14th king of the Mali Empire from 1312 to 1337. He came to power when the previous king, the second Abu Bak, disappeared at sea. Mansa Abu Bak was said to have embarked on a journey to explore the Atlantic Ocean and he never returned. Though some modern historians have cast doubts on Musa's version of events as they suggest that he may have disposed his predecessor and devised the story about the voyage to explain how it took part. Nevertheless, Musa may have inherited a wealthy kingdom, but his work towards trade expansion made Mali the wealthiest kingdom in Africa through salt mining, gold mining, and elephant ivory. The kingdom of Mali spread across the modern day Mali, Senegal, the Gambia, Niger, Guinea, Chad, Mauritania, Nigeria, and Burkina Faso. Mansa Musa developed cities like Tumbuktu and Gao into cultural centers. He also brought architects and scholars from the Middle East and across Africa to design new buildings for his cities. He made the ancient kingdom of Mali into a center of learning in the Islamic world. As regards his Islamic faith, Musa was a devout Muslim and his pilgrimage to Mecca, also called Hajj, made him well known across the northeastern Africa and the Middle East. He believed that Islam was an entry into the cultured world of the Eastern Mediterranean. He made his pilgrimage between 1324 and 1325, spanning 2,700 miles. His procession reportedly included 60,000 men, all wearing brocade and Persian silk, including 12,000 slaves, each carrying 1.8 kg of gold bars, and era dresses and silks, who bore gold staffs, organized horses, and handled bags. 80 camels each carried 23 to 136 kilograms of gold dust, which Musa gave to the poor he met along his route. He also gave the cities he passed on the way to Mecca, Cairo, and Medina. It was reported that he built a mosque every Friday. So after his return from Mecca, he built mosques and large public buildings and cities like Gao, especially Timbuktu, which became a major Islamic university called San Kore Madrasha, also called the University of San Kore or San Kore Masjid, during the 14th century. Mansa Musa introduced architects and scholars from across the Islamic world into his kingdom and the reputation of the Mali kingdom grew. The kingdom reached its greatest extent at success as a worldly kingdom. The date of his death is not certain, but following the report made by Ad Khaldun, an Arab sociologist, philosopher, and historian who was described as the founder of the proto disciplines, Musa died in the year 1337 and was succeeded by his sons. His expansion and administration left his empire well off at his death. The great Mansa remained embedded in the imagination of the world as a symbol of fabulous wealth. Alongside his riches, his Islamic faith, promotion of scholars, and patronage of culture in the Mali. His Hajj has been recorded as the most illustrious moment in the history of West Africa. Musa's reign is commonly regarded as Mali's golden age, according to the Arabic sources. Mansa Musa has been considered the richest human ever, though some sources have tried to estimate his riches 
to as equivalent to 400 billion US dollars but honestly speaking his actual wealth is impossible to accurately calculate my name is Adonai Kejanen and if you really enjoy this why don't you give us a thumbs up subscribe to our channel and follow our platforms Facebook Twitter and Instagram see you next time bye